It took it about 50 seconds or 53 seconds to write the PCM. Now it's writing the TCM for the transmission. So basically what we have here is pretty much a factory Mopar computer for our Hellcat. However, from the factory, these computers are locked. They actually put, I believe, it's a hardware device inside of them that basically locks out the ability to write to the computer unless you're at a dealership and have a dealership tool that connects into the dealership network and basically authenticates and says, yes, you have permission to write to this computer. Outside of that, it's encrypted and locked out. So I think what's happened is companies have gone in and found a way to actually remove that hardware device. And basically you end up getting a factory computer that is unlocked. So that's what this is. This is a, uh, they say aftermarket, but you can see it's a Mopar part number. I think the difference is there's a technical company out there that just unlocks them for HB tuners and Diablo. Now in order to tune your vehicle, you're gonna need a couple more things to go with your unlocked PCM. Diablo is one option. This is called a Trinity. Uh, this is the T1000. It's the older one. There's a new one out. I think they call it a T2 or something. I haven't messed with it, so I can't say how well it works. I've never been super impressed with Diablo. They've just been okay. Um, their software seems a little bit clunky. Uh, it seems like to me they release software sometimes before it's really ready for prime time. Uh, I get it. They're trying to be first to market and, you know, they release features and stuff all the time. However, as I was building dashboards for this, just for the stock Hellcat, trying to find out what I could actually data log. And oh, by the way, you can data log your factory car without unlocking the computer. That's a, a very uh, common misconception is that you have to have an unlocked PCM in order to actually get a data log. That's not true. You can data log the factory PCM no trouble because it is just pulling data or reading data that goes across the CAN bus. And these tools will do that no problem at all. However, if as I was building the dashboards and adding the PIDs, um, that I wanted to get metrics on, this thing would lock up occasionally, or actually a lot, and I would get four pages into what I wanted to build as a dashboard and have to start all over again. You have to have the car running to build the dashboards, and I'm sitting out here with the car idling for a half hour trying to get all the uh, dashboard pages built. So kind of a pain in the butt there. However, once I did get the dashboards built, it actually worked very well. Um, it data logs just fine. I like it that it can kind of set in the windshield. If you've seen some of my drag racing videos, you've seen that I'll have it sitting right here. It's two buttons. I click record a new log and record. Yes, record. Actually, actually twice. Yes, record a new log and then record. And, it, and now it's recording all of my data. When I get done, I hit stop. I hit save, give it a name and OK. And it's, and it's saved it. And you don't have to have a laptop in the car. That was one of the things I really liked about this. Um, HP tuners is the other option and this is what they call their standard module uh, mpvi and both of them come with an obd2 cable diablo comes with that too and both of them come with a usb cable so kind of kind of similar there but other than that that's where the similarities completely stop the hp tuner module uh, mike at ost dino gave me a preview of this when we were at uh, his shop dropping greg's car off a couple of months ago and he actually kind of gave me a five minute kind of tutorial and it's much more intuitive. You get the uh, device and you get a software package to go with it. So that means now you're going back to a laptop that you're going to need, um, you know, if you're going to data log. So this connects to your car through OBD2 and then you connect the device to your laptop. Unfortunately, now you have to have a laptop in the car to data log. I'm hoping HP tuners will eventually come out with something like that to get your data log so that it's more compact and easier to use. And then you can actually review the logs on a laptop. That would be much better in my opinion. So hopefully they do that. But in the interim, we're just gonna to have to use this with a laptop. On the Hellcat, after talking to Mike, I've decided I'm gonna go with HP tuners on that vehicle just because it gives you a much wider array and a better overall software package to use for tuning. The very good news and the big difference between Diablo and HP tuners is when you buy this, you actually get the tuning software with it. So it, it comes with it and you get credits basically. So now I want to tune my car, it costs six credits, let's say, and I think that's actually what it costs. They're 50 bucks a piece. So I go buy six credits and I tune my car. And oh, by the way, the tool comes with eight to begin with. An older Challenger, it takes two credits. So I could potentially buy one of these, tune my car and tune a friend's car, all included. You're not, you're not tied to um, the Diablo tools, they're tied to a VIN. So once you marry this to a car, you can't use it to tune any other vehicle. Now you can use it to data log other vehicles, but you can't use it to tune other vehicles. They lock it to the VIN number. Also, you don't get the tuning software with the tool. You get a very small amount of adjustment that you can make. I think it's 10% either way. So for example, we're at the track and let's say the air fuel is 11.0 and that's too rich. 
So we wanna, we wanna adjust that back and lean it out a little bit. You've only got 10% of adjustment either way, rich or lean, when you use one of these tools. So um, a little bit limited there. If you buy the software package to go with the Diablo tool, I think it's like $2,500 or $3,000 and it's called CMR. So most of the time only a shop would spend that kind of money to get that software package that's already included with the HP Tuner module. Now it's not called, um, it's not called CMR obviously. This is called um, VCM Suite, I think is what it's called. So it comes with the tool all in one package, very nice. And one final thing I'll mention about the two tools is that even though I'm going to tune the vehicle with HP tuners, I can still use my Diablo Trinity to data log with as long as I don't need something in the data log that the Trinity can't detect. So HP tuners, I think, has a good hold on the wideband sensors in the Hellcat. I've never been able to get them to work on the Trinity. So initially when I'm dialing the tune in, I'm probably going to need to use the uh, HP tuner software with a laptop. But once I get it dialed in, I can go back to using just the Trinity uh, like I like on the windshield to make things simpler. Well, just to be sure something hadn't changed, it's been a while since I've used a Diablo tool for tuning. I went and looked and they actually do offer licenses now similar to what HP tuners does. However, it's only for specific tools. You have to have the Intune i2, i3, or t2 to tune multiple vehicles, and it looks like an extra license is $149. So at least you're not tied to just one vehicle anymore, but I'm still gonna use HP tuners, number one, to try something different, and number two, after seeing the software and the fact that it's included, it sold me on using it as my tuning solution. Okay, next, hook up your HP tuners USB key to your laptop. Should have been in the uh, box with your tool, and it'll open up a window that looks like this, and you're gonna wanna grab the VCM suite just double click it to install. Yes to the agreement. Let it tell it where to go. That was quick. And then just navigate to the VCM editor launch icon in program files and you'll get the HP Tuner software fired up. Now there is a license key that is required to activate your credits. So make sure that you type that in and it should have come with some paperwork or in an email from HP Tuners. Okay, with all of that done, I've got the HP Tuner module connected up to the car through the OBD2 port, as well as the laptop. I'm gonna launch HP Tuners. And now the first thing I recommend you do is download your factory tune out of the car. That's the very first thing, and that way you've got a copy of it. I would make backups of that. If you ever need to go back to factory, you'll be able to do so. So we're gonna do that now. So we have to key the ignition on. And if that dinging drives you crazy like it does me, you can use the door latch and take a screwdriver and push it to make it stop. And just don't remember when you get ready to close the door to lift up on the door handle to reset it. And so that I don't forget, I'm gonna put the screwdriver right there by the door lock. Okay, so now we're back to HP tuners. We're gonna to go to flash at the top and then read vehicle. And what this is gonna do when I click read is it's gonna read the information out of the factory PCM into the software and then we'll be able to save it and we'll have an exact copy of our factory tune that we can refer to later if needed. Okay, and after about 15 minutes, it'll give you a prompt to give it a file name, and I'm just calling it Hellcat Stock HPT for HP Tuners, and I'm gonna save it. That's all there is to pull on the factory tune out of the car. Okay, so we're gonna load up our first tune. We've got the ignition keyed on, but the car is not started. We've launched the HP Tuners VCM editor. We're gonna go to File, Open. We're gonna select our tune from Mike at OST Dyno. We're gonna go to Flash, right vehicle the type in your name you're saying you accept some terms and the terms are basically that they've detected this is a 2015 and up chrysler vehicle and that they come from the factory with locked computers and that they will not refund any credits if you try to use them on a locked computer and it uses the credits for some reason don't do that tell us we don't have a license show license options so it's basically telling us we're going to use six credits so we're going to say okay to that ask you are you sure Yes, I am sure. Okay, now it's gonna give us the option to write the calibration, so I'm gonna hit write. So 
So that's all there is to putting a tune in your modern Mopar, particularly Go Man Go here. It takes about two to three minutes to load the tune up. And keep in mind, there's two separate computers in there that get tuned. One is the PCM, that stands for Powertrain Control Module, that's your engine. There's a separate one called the TCM, Transmission Control Module. The tuners will charge separately for those. If you go and say, hey, I just want to tune for the car, they're going to ask you, do you want to tune your transmission? If you do, it costs a little bit more because you have to buy additional credits to go with the transmission tune. However, it's well worth it. When you start tuning the transmission, you can firm up the shift points and you can run the RPMs out. The transmission actually controls when it shifts. It's, it kind of works together with the engine uh, RPM limits. And so you raise them in the engine, it'll still shift at 6,000 RPM like it did stock unless you also tune the transmission. So keep that in mind. And these cars, for whatever reason, Dodge cut them off at 6,000 RPM from the factory or thereabouts. Some, some people say they can get 6,200 if they use a paddle and click it just right and all of that stuff. However, these cars make power way on out there. I've heard of them uh, being spun up to 6,900, 7,000 RPM. Now, I'm not that bold, I'm not gonna go that far, but 6,400 RPM, 6,500 RPM probably isn't a problem, and they make about 70 more horsepower in that RPM range, so it's well worth the money to go ahead and get a TCM tune with your PCM tune, so get both. And I've been out driving this car around on Mike's tune, and it is a world of difference. I, I can't believe how much different it feels with a custom tune in the car. He's firmed up the shift points and he's set it up to where uh, D or just in drive, it kind of drives pretty docile and, and pretty much like stock with a little bit more, little bit more oomph. Now when you shift into sport and especially sport with paddles enabled, it's a whole different ball game. It changes the dynamics of the car in each mode and he's able to set that up in that TCM tune and it's phenomenal. So I highly recommend you get a custom tune even if you're bone stock. Now we just need to get the car out to the track with the custom tune and see how much faster to run versus stock. Hopefully you liked the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. That helps me get these videos kind of out in the YouTube land and into those algorithms and they get picked up by more people. They help me get subscribers and get more views and I appreciate you guys that do that. Check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage as well as our website www.speediesgarage.net and I will be seeing you out there.